going? What up, dude? It's going pretty good, man. Yeah. I know, riding around in a Tesla, you know, I, what up? too bad we're not karaoke, you know? I know, dude, that would, that would be funny. Like, actually, they have a couple of, like, toys on this thing where you can sing along, and they have, like, games. Oh, yeah? Um, but have you ever, are you a, an electrical vehicle guy or no? I would like to have a Tesla one day, but we'll, we'll see what happens, you know? <laughs> It's about uh, 10 state races away. Yeah, 10? No, it's none, baby. What are you talking about? We forgot we only get 10%. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, that's true. It depends on... Uh, if we just it depends get you. On, the, on the size of the race. But it, first and foremost, just being healthy and being here is just the best thing of all. You know, and hanging out with you in your car. Yeah, man. Well, how's your knee? Are you getting things together with it? Is it you gonna... want to start now? Or we're yeah, gonna... we're going to just start talking. Uh, Dude, so welcome to my little office here. It's a nice little office, bro. Yeah. We're just going to... We're basically just gonna talk a little bit here about um, all the things you've been through, man. Because I, I think a lot of times when people think about the greatest riders in history, you always come up. And I know you, you know, that was a while ago, but like, what, how did you get horses out of the gate so effing fast? And I mean like slow horses that go 22 and change or whatever, you, you get them 21 and change. Like, I wanna know. Straight up, I know you're not riding anymore, so no one's gonna steal steal your stuff. I don't think, and, and take you out of the money. But like, how did you do that? Well, first of all, Chris, I thank you for the compliment, and I am very uh, honored to be here with you and talk about this, and yeah, man. and to give the uh, public some info on on the horse racing, and and try to get some more fans back into our in industry. Now, as far as me coming out of the gate, that's a big secret that I'm. Not really going to let go of right now. Well, the reason, you got some secret sauce. The reason, the reason that is is because I hope and pray that I can make at least a couple years of riding return, and then I will tell you all the secrets. Oh, okay. Okay? No, that's... We'll just wait for that, and, and um, you know, if you guys are out there watching, you other jockeys, and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but I'm going to have to come back and just, like... Uh, Leave you in the dust. Or you could set up your own little coaching business. And I you could, could do you that. could privately only share it with like one or two guys. Well, I've shared it with a couple guys already. And uh, okay. one guy in particular, uh, he uh, pulled me aside and said, Hey, you got to help me with my breaking out of the gate. So mm -hmm. I, I, first, he, well, first he said, Hey, bro, bro, um, can you come meet me in the jock room after workouts? Because I was working horses. It was a couple years ago at Del Mar. It was Rafael Bejarano. And, um, mm -hmm. He was having trouble coming out of the gate, and uh, I um I, I didn't know what he wanted at first. He said, "Meet me at the jocks room after the workout." So I said, "Oh, I wonder what he wants." So I went to the jocks room, and he goes, "Bro, bro, I'm having trouble coming out of the gate. I need help. I need help." You know, and it takes a real man to to really stand up and say they need help with a certain big time, thing, especially when it's your profession that you have a passion for. And Rafael has a a big passion for his career, you know. Um, That's what Mahomes did with Brady this year, actually, too. What? He finally asked Brady for some help. I guess when well, Brady had retired. So right, yeah. right, right. Well, um, I went to the jocks room, and he was showing me how he was coming out of the gate. And I could see already, on, just on the um, equalizer, that he was doing things wrong. He was, uh, he was basically having the horse pull him out of the gate. When you have a horse pulling you out of the gate, you're 100 and some pounds. And he's pulling forward, you're falling back. That's almost like a 200 pound pressure on the horse's mouth or the horse's mane or whatever you're hanging on to. Okay. So the only little secret I'm gonna give him is that you gotta come out of the gate with the horse. Okay. You know? And getting back to the story, Raphael that day, I taught him some things, I told him some things, and uh, he, um, I left the jock room about, uh, I say 10.30. And he uh, was getting ready for the races. It was at Del Mar. And um, I drove back up to Los Angeles because I was commuting back and forth to work horses. And I'm watching TVG, and the first race he rides, boom, he's on top. Comes out of the gate, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, I text him, he goes, and he goes, Maestro, oh, did you see that, Maestro? Did you see that? And I was like, yes, yes, it was That's great. That's teacher Raphael. for people that don't yeah, know. Yeah, teacher's my astro. Yeah. So um, Raphael was very appreciative of it. And uh, I think it's helped him in his uh, coming out of the gate. Um, but you got to be consistent with it, you know. And uh, I don't think Raphael rides as many speed horses as I rode. So, you yeah. know, it kind of it you can't, you can't really helps when you got a speed horse underneath you. Oh, you know, of course. because I did not just all of a sudden make every horse come out like that. No, you didn't. You know, I did on... 
quite a few and there is a secret to it and that will be exposed one day yeah but not today no i mean people ask me for horses all the time mm -hmm. and how i do what i do and i gotta keep my cards close to my chest too so i yeah. totally respect what you're what you're doing because so you're gonna tell me what you know though right i mean you're gonna tell me right i mean not on the camera but i'll tell you a few things okay. i mean i was just telling what i know i mean the thing the thing <laughs> is we you know it's almost like you can teach a man to fish rather than give him the fish is is kind of the motto that i like to live by so rather than just give people horses i'd rather like share with them a, a thing or two people that i think are good people you know because mm -hmm. it's like when you're going to choose what jockeys to share with mm -hmm. you're not going to just share it with everybody probably you're gonna you're gonna find a few people that you think that are that are good people that that resonate with you, and then you know hopefully you guys have a well, relationship moving forward. That kind of thing. What what I choose to to share is 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 my my um what comes out of my my heart, you know. And if I sh mm -hmm. choose to share it with somebody, it's coming out of my heart. And I really think that I would share with just about any jockey that would come up to me and ask me for help. Oh, really? Because that's that's, that's really a jockey noble, that's man. that's asking for help for their profession, and they're giving you the compliment of being able to teach them something mm -hmm. that they look up to you yeah. of doing. You know, I mean, whether yeah. it's um, coming out of the gate or whether it's just meeting owners and greeting owners and making them feel like they're they already won the race before they want it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I I I, um, I cherish it in my career. I always cherished it. And I always cherish watching the owners and shaking their hand and, and looking them in the eye and saying, yeah. let's go get lucky. Yeah, I know it's it's a little different for gamblers. Um, like myself, if I give out a horse mm -hmm. or if I give out certain things, the pools are so small that if somebody puts 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 on a horse, it can deflate my odds. Correct. So for me, it's a little different. But for you, helping these you know people risking their lives – and um, helping them perform best. It's actually a win-win for everybody because if horses break well, you know, and we can see it on paper that they should break well as a professional gambler trying to see and predict the future, um, that helps. And so it's when the horses don't break well and don't mm -hmm. go to the front that screws things up. But, yeah, you know, um, most horses have the ability to break well when you have pet balance wheel on them. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just joking. Are you are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you ready to ride again? Cut, Is that cut. something that? No, we were good. Right? No, no, no. Well, no. I want to cut anyways because look, you're, you're, you're humble, you're, baby. I gotta get more uh, light. My see the sun coming through the clouds. Yeah, that's, that's making me more dark. No, so you, I, you got I, your tan, brother. You, you look no, good. No, look, man, I'm, I'm like all dark. No, you're not. Yeah. No. So, so let me ask you about something that. At least turn the car around so I could get some light in my face. Too. <laughs> Okay, you look like you got a light, I, you know? I, I think. I mean, Come let's, on, let's yeah, turn the I, I can, Well, I can, I can turn around. You can even cruise a little bit when we can talk. Come on, right, cruise. Right, right, I, can, on. I can cruise a little yeah, bit. Yeah, cruise a little bit. We'll cruise. All right, we'll, we'll cruise a little bit and talk. Um, so I wanted to ask you something that has always been on my mind just because I see, you know, people complain and stuff. What are your thoughts on, like, jockeys that can influence races by, like, um, you know, in the back in the 80s and 90s using buzzers and and things to kind of like get an edge is that is that is that real like to do does that really make a difference in your opinion and have you have you seen people do it like is that something that well happened? it's happened and it's, it's been known to happen because they've caught people doing it you know and does it make a difference i i would think that one out of a hundred horses it might make a difference yeah. but are you willing to put your career on the line because of winning a race and getting away with something that you cheated with yeah that's not right i mean i think that um i've never i've never done something that's illegal to try to make always win you know and uh i think that well for instance here you go i mean um any, any inquiry that i've ever gotten into yeah or been disqualified from yeah is because it was a mistake because either I drifted out too much and got disqualified, yeah, or mistake. I bumped somebody's. It's just well, hard. I mean, sometimes you're riding you, to win the race. Sometimes and, you're going to come over. Come on. I mean, well, we no, I, I would not come over on anybody intentionally because I could kill somebody. Yeah, that would be I mean, almost like, like attempted murder. No, more like <laughs> more like subtle. Like, well, you no, know, you know what I will do is that if you're on the outside of me, I'll, I'll float you out a little bit, maybe. Yeah, that'll drift you a little bit, or yeah, or if, if if you're on the inside of me and you're coming up and we're moving together. I'm not going to let you get through that hole. I'm going to put you behind the other horse. And you're going to have to grab your horse. Okay. Because I'm out there to win for my owners. 
I'm, yeah, not, I'm not going to make the most money I can for the owners that hire me that day. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that these days with these riders, and that's really sad. You think, you think pe people are more, a little more lackadaisical or what? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I see riders, there's certain riders, that, they'll ride their, to the end of the race and a couple of jumps past the wire, which I was taught by my father to ride three jumps past the wire. And that's why I try to tell these jockeys these days. Uh, uh, a kid from Venezuela came up and uh, was asking me some questions about a month ago at Santa Anita. Yeah. And uh, I watched him ride this filly, and she was uh, 70 to 1. He made the lead entering the stretch. I thought he was going to win it. Wow. The filly got a little bit tired. He ran fourth. He could have ran third. Oh, and, uh, and, that's and the kid's a good kid, and he's a great rider. He just didn't. Nobody told him, ride two jumps past the wire. Ride through the wire, not at the wire. Right. Because horses sense when you give up that energy. We're like, oh, the wire's coming up. Oh, get, no. You know what? You don't do that. Especially as a young jockey. You have to ride past that wire because you don't know who's flying at the end. You know? Look at Shane Kite and Kangaroo Court. Yeah, I saw that. Sandy Hawley. Sandy Hawley riding Shane Kite. And Sandy's a great rider. And don't get me wrong, I, I love Sandy. And, and unfortunately that day, uh, Trevor was, you could hear him clear his bell and Shane Kite is in front and, and Sandy actually thought he was in front further than what he was. I think it looked like that. And here comes Joey Steiner with Kangaroo Court and right on the wire, Johnny Longden trained, mm. Kangaroo Court gets Shane Kite, D Dale Landers horse, right on the wire and Sandy was upset. Yeah. But I think he was more upset at himself Self, yeah. because he actually listened to Trevor, and I think he called up Trevor. And that said, is so crazy. You know, but but those things happen. You know, I mean, we are human. We make mistakes. But as a rider, you have to ride through the wire. And and did your dad teach you that? No, you well, my dad always told me that, and my dad always told me you have to think a second in front of the race. You have to think a second in front of what you're doing. You see a horse, a hole starting to develop. You got to make that split second decision whether to get to that hole or if it's, or it's closing, whether or not to go up in there because you could be very, yeah. it'd be a very dangerous yeah. situation. Now, yeah, I, what I was getting back to as far as jockeys riding for the owners, I mean, you think about the trainers, how much money they have to pay on feed bills every month, okay? Yeah. These trainers are paying an astronomical trainers amount of money today, to yeah. take care of every horse. They got to pay the groom. They got to pay the exercise boy. They got to pay the hot walker. They got to pay the foreman. They got to pay the vet. They got to pay all these bills, yeah. you know. And you don't think that a third and a fourth matter to a trainer and the, and when they have to pay that fee bill at the end of the month? So, I mean, so, so let me ask you, is it because... They, they, they just, you don't think that they think they're going to win. And so they're kind of greedy or is it more, and I'm not saying, obviously a lot of jockeys do ride through the, through the wire and stuff, but I mean, do you think that it's, that they're physically tired, that they're so no, tired no, that, I, they, that they don't I, have that I, I would hope not. I mean, I would hope not because if you're tired out there and you're riding at the best place in California, right, San Anita be Park, you better go to the gym and play some racquetball or you better go do something. I mean, yeah. because you're riding with the best riders in the state and probably in the country. You know, I mean, a lot of these guys can go to other jo other tracks and be lean jockeys. The fifth and sixth lean jockey or can be a lean jockey somewhere else. Yeah. But you know what? It's a matter of, of the, the stamina you're going to have. It's a matter of, of riding the horse to the best of his ability, but not yours. And also sure. get him to perform to the best of his ability. Because the horse is the one running. We're the pilots. It's like a, a dog fight with two, two jets. And whoever maneuvers that jet the best is going to win the jo dog fight, right? Yeah. So you, you as a jockey have to know your horse, have to know your horse's abilities, have to know your opponent's abilities, have to know their mistakes that they make quite a bit and their, their habits. Yeah. And you have to know their horse's habits and know their horse's abilities. I mean, so if I'm going around the turn and I'm in fourth place on the rail and I'm following a certain jockey that I might think uh, right. I know is going to leave that rail. Yeah. I'm going to wait there until he leaves that rail. Yeah. Or if I'm following the horse that I know is going to get out because he always gets out in the turns, I'm going to follow that horse until he starts getting out. Okay. And I'm going to shoot through that rail and I could probably win the race. Okay, you know? so, you, so you actually, when you are 
in the race, you know. I know who's in front of me. You know, you know the guys know based on the way they me. look. Oh, I, I so, yeah, yeah, you can you can tell. You, you, if you don't know yeah. that, then you shouldn't be riding. Well, let me ask you, how much work did did you really put in? Because a lot of us sometimes question, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, because you got a lot of horses to ride. But how much work did you really put in reading the racing form, other than just saying, oh, it's a speed horse, or it's a stalker, or it's a closer, or it's a presser? Did you guys actually? Did you like personally sit there and really look at each race carefully? You look or at was you look at the just, race carefully. Your horse, or with the it's your homework. You That's your homework. Okay, not only to know the horses, but to look at their last races and see what happened, why they didn't win. See what happened if the jockey made the mistake. See yeah. what happened if the horse has the equipment change this time. Yep, You've absolutely. got to know all these things and put them into the role of like, how can I win this race? You know, I see a horse 10, 10, 10, 10, okay, in the form, and I'm riding him. Mm -hmm. He's 25 to 1, right? Yeah. I'm going to find out. In that his last races, yeah. what happened to him? Okay. Why he doesn't want to? Be, if he doesn't want to be on the rail, oh, I thought you were just gonna... If he doesn't want dirt in his face, or if he's never been on the lead, come on, bro. I mean, yeah. these horses that run 10, 10, 10, 10, You put them on the lead, they change their whole. But how can you do that? How can you get a how horse? Can to you start? Do how can you do that? How can you just get a horse to go to lead that doesn't really mentally have well, that in well, there? Well, first of all, you got to change your name to Patrick Valenzuela. Is that right? Is it what, no, like no, that, no yeah. middle name? I might have. Just, Patrick just, Angel Valenzuela. Okay, maybe. there we go. The yeah. Angel. That's well, it. I'm not an angel, though. <laughs> we all what do you know mean? That. Come on. Angels fall from heaven and they uh, come back, man. Yeah, well, I don't want to be a... I, I just, <laughs> I, let's just stick to Patrick, okay? Okay. What about P-Val? Do you like P-Val or you like P -Val's, Patrick better? P-Val's a pretty cool dude. I mean, yeah. you're right. I mean, P-Val, the problem with P-Val is that as long as P-Val's on the horse, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But when P-Val gets off that horse... You gotta start worrying. <laughs> well, I, th I think the, I think the challenge there is if somebody, if a horse actually has you riding them, and they know that they. Can... I don't think you got what I said. No, I didn't. See, like this: if I'm on a horse, I'm safe, yeah. right? Because I'm on a horse. Yeah. And I'm riding, and I'm safe. But, but as soon as I get off the horse, them, but what? I, I might be gone over there. <laughs> Oh, you're saying you're going to get another animal and no, beat him next I'm time? I'm talking about, like, what's he going to do tonight? He's going to show up tomorrow. <laughs> that stuff, you know. Which has been in the past, you know. Whatever, but, yeah. Dude. But that's just a joke. Dude, but, but, but that's, no, I like that. that. You know, I like that you're I mean, humble. with, Or like that you are you you can laugh about it. No, because, I can laugh about it. You, you, you shaved your head today. Kind of, to what, I'm not drug testing you, bro. What are you doing? No, that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> no, but check this out, okay? I know that um, Madeline Paulson, okay, I yeah. won on Phrase in the Breeders' Cup, okay? Yeah, I saw that. So race. now, that so cool. now it's, Madeline it's and Alan and I were flying back, and I'm in their G6 in the back, and Madeline's in the back with me. We're talking about Phrase, right? Yeah. And uh, Clay, uh, uh, who was it? Clay Lacey and, uh, and, and, and uh, Mr. Paulson are, are driving the jet, okay? Yeah. So, um, so Alan comes back there and he says, oh, you're, staying, you're staying with us at the Turnberry Isle tonight because we're riding the Pan American in the Gulf Stream. Okay. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. And, you know, I'm going to have a drink or two and go back to my room, whatever, you know, and go to bed, yeah. you know. And uh, Madeline had other plans, so <laughs> she, uh, she, her and uh, Alan were there and uh, we get off the plane, get the sh uh, uh, chauffeur to take us to the Turnberry Isle. And I said, okay, I'm going to go in and get my room. They go, no, 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 no. You're not going in here. You, 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 you're going with us. I go, oh. well, we're at the hotel. Yeah. And they go, no, no, we're staying on the captain's ship. I go, oh. captain's ship? They go, yeah, you're staying in that net room right next to us. And we hear oh. that door open. <laughs> they want to make sure you're not getting oh, yeah. trouble. Yeah. And, and Keep was, you on a short yeah, leash. Yeah, and that was good. That was good because... Um, well, how old were you then? We won the Pan American by five Yeah, but, but how old were you at that time? Uh, I was... You're I probably mid-20s? No, late... No, it was later than that. It was okay. in the... Um, Phrase was like, what, 90s? 92, so I was about 30. Okay. Yeah, I was 30. So w let me ask you, when you were like 17 and you won the Santa Anita Derby, which is insane, did you, I mean, was, was your lifestyle, were you just pretty much every day just going to work and, and like no social life? Or did no, you, I had a did social you life. Because I, I was going to say, when did, when did the fun... How do you balance think, all that? Because, you know... You, you, well, you know what? I mean, Honestly, I, I, I should have had a handler handle me, you know. Certainly uh, like, handle like me or, or maybe I should have been castrated when I was 16. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, so, something something like, like that because... Having good energy? You know, I, I you know what? Um, I just like life, you know. I really like life and living life. And uh, unfortunately, well, sometimes, sometimes I was a party. I <laughs> left the party, but... Um, I I just uh, I can't change the past. I cannot change the past at all. You know, and it's my life. You know, and 
if somebody out there that wants to write a movie or something, we could give you some damn good stories. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think that's actually like something that that you can do moving forward as as you get. I don't know if you. Well, we, we we will do that in the future. I think, pe I think people would really like to hear some. Well, not now necessarily all the details because yeah. obviously you're gonna try to make I guess some kind of a comeback. Well, there's nothing ways, illegal but, is gonna be in it, but a couple. I mean, you know, baby powder looking things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it's baking soda, right? No, yeah, no, but yeah. No, honestly, bro. Um, uh, get over the joking and all. Yeah. You know, I do want to write a, uh, my biography one day and um, maybe do it on a tape recorder and put it all together and have an editor edit it. Yeah. You know, and then write the book or, or possibly do a documentary. That would be something that I think would be very lucrative to our sport. Like El Chapo? Like one of those No, kind of like, I'm thinking more ones. like... Um, like what, this like a deep series into maybe what was life like? Well, was you know, like it could you? even become... Uh, um, it's got to be a documentary because it's got to be... Uh, Okay, this is what I'm saying right now. Okay, like I want to come back to ride. Okay, I want to go back. I to love ride, that you're. I okay? love that you're doing that. Dude. All right. Now, so now whether it's, it's California, it's up to the California Horse Racing Board. It's really up to me. You know what I do in my life and what I show them on paperwork and what I show them on a daily basis that I am. A, Are you uh, fit enough? Like, can you no, I'm not right now because I, I'm going to get a knee replacement. Remember? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I get the knee replacement. I would do the physical therapy and, and keep doing what I'm doing today, which is being clean and sober. And also Respect. getting to the racetrack more often. Because when you're not there, people tend to think the worst of you. But I've always experienced in the past, and I've noticed yeah. from other industries and other people, that if you're there every day, people really don't miss you. But like if I'm not there yeah. as often as I they want me to then they start to miss you mm -hmm. and they go wait a minute oh it's a good thing you look good you know but um you know i do have a life and i and i and it's not as financially secure as i would want it to be but yeah you know yeah, i'm getting a knee replacement and i'm going to do the best i can how do you spend most of your time right now like what do you what do you do like, well, like... hobbling around because my yeah. knee hurts so bad yeah. but but honestly um it's going to be good you know it's going to be good and and i'm going to try the best i can to get back and if the CHRB has, has will conform their hearts to crisis, then they will be forgiving and hopefully give but me. But what a about what about okay? So what about and before then? So you got that's probably a year away. I'm guessing, right? Or, I'm guessing it's like eight months away. If eight you months, really okay. Want to, and I'm not trying to shortchange you. I know you can do. It. I know you can do it because I. I, well, I know I'm gonna you have do it whether it's here or somewhere else. Yeah, you'll get. I will you'll guarantee get, you, I do. Oh, it. dude, somebody, you dude, know? people know. You know, well, okay, so let's get back to what I was talking about. Now, the documentary would be a, a great idea right now because. How many comebacks have I made? Quite a few, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, they've been pretty much successful comebacks, most of them. Mm -hmm. Now, wouldn't it be a good idea for somebody that has a film company or or uh, something in their movies to do a documentary on how to make a comeback? Yeah. Because here you got this fat, overweight jockey right Not now that, bad, that needs a new knee, and maybe they could, like, film me going to, like, the to get the surgery, out of surgery, all of a sudden he starts working out. All of a sudden he starts trying to get his knee better so he can go back to riding. You know, and yeah. maybe even the the uh, going to the meetings with the CHRV filming it, or going to to uh, to the track and seeing people, seeing mm -hmm. if they miss me or not, and, and seeing well Patrick wasn't so you know, they weren't so receptive of him or this. You know, it, it could be a documentary. It's the real life yeah. of my life in the next year, and to see if I make it back to California, yeah. Louisiana. New Mexico, wherever it may be, yeah. that I'm going to ride a horse because I will ride a horse again yeah, yeah. in a race. Yeah. And by the grace of the good Lord, I will win a race again. Well, I think that's one of the things I see in elite athletes or elite performers is that there, there's a mindset mm -hmm. where, like, you know, you're destined to do something and you're going to do it no matter what. Even if it means you're going to fail and fail and fail, or you're gonna, like certain quarterbacks have this, but but your your desire. Well, you know, to, the to, failures to are not back. really failures. They just give you no, more exactly. incentive to make it accomplishments. Oh, there's so... I mean, and as a guy who, who bets in tournaments, so my thing is I, I look at tournaments and I have to decide how to make 10 to 20x in one day. So if you start with 1,000, I got to make 10 grand or 20 grand in one day. Mm -hmm. You know, an average return is 20%. Mm -hmm. so, so going against, you know, conventional wisdom, it requires a certain like elevated mindset and the only way you get there is to fail and to like you said just kind of look at it as a as a as a learning experience and um after enough pain sets in 
I know I'm not going to bet on a horse like that again. Right. Because I lost everything. Because when I bet, I bet okay, I go wait, all wait, in. Time out there. Time out there. Because I, I have to. I don't think that's a, a, a good idea. Because <laughs> which part to bet on a horse like that again? Because some, not every race is the same. Okay. And a horse that you did bet on, yeah, that's fair. it might work the next time because you saw something that yeah. nobody saw. Okay. You know, it just didn't work out that time. Oh, you're, you're, you're. But it may work out the language. next time because I'm a mm -hmm. very positive person, okay? Yeah. I will go out to that paddock and I will shake the owner's hand and I wholeheartedly, yeah. in my heart, know I'm going to win that race. Yep. You know, and. Wait, uh, is, that, is that because you just have the, the, again, you're manifesting it? Or is it literally you look at the, at the form and you know that you're talking about not every every horse? You're talking about there's certain days. I'm talking when, about every horse because. Okay, you, you've you got do go A man who like thinks that. he can win yeah. will almost always win. A man that doesn't think he can win of course. will run second. I'm right, or, I'm right there I mean, with you. And that's the way it is in life. Every great athlete, every great performer, Goes out there with the confidence, knowing they're going to win it. They're going to, they're going to take this down. They're going to do whatever they, yeah. they're going to do, and they know they got the means, and they know they got the blessings of the good Lord to do it yep. with. No, you have to have you both. Know? You have and, to, you have to have a spiritual I mean, connection for sure. There's no doubt but, about it. So the thing, the thing that rings true for me there is, is every single tournament I enter, mm -hmm. I feel I'm going to win. Yeah, and that's good. Good thing. Yeah, I mean, and positive energy. It's, but it's also yeah. it is it is it is kind of remarkable in a way because I just. There is a point where sometimes confidence can get in the way. Yeah. You can get a little overconfident. But I go in, and when I say I'm not going to bet on a certain horse again, it wouldn't be that exact animal. Not right, that, right. I know that's not what you're saying either. Yeah. But like I look at things, and I see certain things, and it's about the repetition of those things. Mm -hmm. So I want to see a certain type of horse and a certain type of race. And that's why when people ask me things like, how do I do what I do? It's it's exactly what you said. Every mm. single race is different. Right. However, you can put them in kind of buckets. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you yeah. know, if you if you have a speed horse that maybe is like I don't know a, a three out of ten. Yeah. Right. And you're going up in a maiden claimer, and it's two year olds. Yeah. And it's like you know five and a half. Yeah. You might know how to play that game versus maybe it's on the grass and it's a horse that's maybe a, a speed horse at a five. Yeah. You know that's not that's a little faster, but it's you know on the grass. So 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 we have. All these calculations, but for me, my brain is kind of like like a an odd supercomputer because I can just put it on the, in all these different pockets yeah. and store it. But then I I I don't like pain. But then you got to come up with the X factor. Oh, there's always, and that's the thing about racing. Yeah, what's the X factor? What is that? Is well, PBL on the horse or not? If well, you're gonna I run can't bet on you, bro. <laughs> I can't bet on you now, bro. <laughs> but you know what? I know. Why don't you I become know, a jockey agent? I'm, and then I'm you can the X, bet on the I'm saying the X factor because Aaron Aaron has. You know Aaron Hess. Yeah, right? yeah, I met him a long Aaron time ago. Aaron Hess, when he was young, he was he was uh, he used to come to races and he sat into his program. He goes, "You're the X Factor. You're the X Factor." I was like, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> well, you know, and the X Factor was uh, who's going to set the pace. Yeah, I'm going to set the always, pace. Always, always. You know, and and it's just um, no, dude. Let me tell you a story real quick. I remember it was I think it was either the future. interviews about him right now. No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. Tell Dude, me a story. Come, come on, here. bro. This is about yeah. you. You're talking. I, I, um, there's a horse named Howso Walso. Howso Walso. Do you remember this? So it's a two-year-old. It was in, it was a Del Mar Futurity, I believe, or is the debutante. One of the two. Okay. 20 to 1. Okay. You're on the rail. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was, I think, a couple of other horses. I think Ski Dancer was in there. Some other, other. Is that the horse of uh, um, um, uh, Patrick, uh, I sure. mean. Uh, Maybe um, Polanco trainer? No, no, I don't know who was that, it. it was. No, no, no. It was uh, uh, Patty, uh, Patty, um, Patty, the veterinarian. His wife, um, doctor, um, shoot, yeah. had, um, had the gray horse, um, um, this is like, this is like nineties. Like this is when I was like, in high school. Okay. Like, yeah, no, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. This is, I but was, the only, the only thing that blew my mind was you got that horse out of the gate and I can't, I haven't even looked at the form in a minute, but, but this is so long ago, but really? you were able, and there was a, I think, honestly, I think there was a bias that day and you rode that rail and you, and you busted it at 20 to one. And, and I guess one of my questions was. Did you believe in the Del Mar bias theories? Did you think that the ocean or the tides or certain times the inside and the outside were better at Del Mar, like on the dirt? Because like a lot of people were big into that. Now there was a time where I, I saw some of it, but again, I don't see it anymore, but I'm curious. Do you, do you think it's like a myth? Because you like I, I, I interviewed Victor Espinosa, he doesn't honestly, believe in him. I honestly think that it happens with the turf. Oh, the turf. The oh, turf. Be, oh, because of the ocean, the, the water and the grass? Or yeah, the water and the grass. And, interesting, and, okay. And uh, the turf can get softer very quickly at Del Mar. Oh, and and, uh, and 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 back in the day, the turf was a foot long. The grass itself was okay. a foot 
long. Oh, depth. When, when, yeah, when you go in there, they, the, the grass used to come up to the horses, uh, their chins. Oh, so wow. it was like, and, and, so and, and when they run, you go, because they were hitting the grass. Yeah. When they run, right? You hear that all the way around the track. And it was so safe because the, the grass would actually fold over mm. and protect itself from getting the roots up so much, you know? I mean, it, it was a great grass course. I don't know why they changed it. I mean, it, yeah, it got beat up pretty much towards the end of the meet, but it was a safe grass course. It was a nice grass course. I loved riding that, that deep grass. And it w wasn't even really well, So was it more like European style? It was more European style, and a lot of horses come from off the pace one a lot more. Yeah. But I loved riding that deep course. I mean, it was a nice grass course. And uh, what, I really love riding it now. Who were some of your favorite turf horses you rode at Del Mar? Navarone. Navarone. I, I, I uh, remember the Del Mar Derby. Denier right? and Panier, you know? Yeah, I remember uh, that Acclamation. Horse. Acclamation, yep. I mean, I've been on uh, how about Three Valleys? Uh, I don't remember. Three Valleys said to a track record of Ohio. One, three, two, Come on, man, my memory can only handle Come so much on. data, dude. Then we got, um, who else we got? Um, dang, how about Track Robbery? Remember her? Mm -mm. She was a filly trained by Bob Wheeler. I don't even know She's a filly from. Uh, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you brought her out here, and I would just sit on her. She ran against Save Wild Life, Prince, Princess Corinda, who Gene Cleveland trained. And uh, these three fillies always ran the same race, and I would probably win one out of, I mean, five out of six races with, with track robbery. She was wow. just a speed demon, and, and she would never stand the lead until I got on her. Did and you, then did I just let her do her thing. I just let her go to the front, sit there with a long rein, and top of the lane, I throw her across, and just... Open up, man. She's a cut like a like a cat coming out of a closet or something, you know. So did you? Um, who who trained Nav Navarone? You know? Navarone was Rodney Rash, and I'm going to say I something remember, about Rodney Rash. Rodney name. Rash is probably one of the best trainers that came from the Charlie Whittenham barn. Okay. The man was a genius. He sucked every ounce of knowledge that out of Charlie's. I mean, he would sit there and, and actually be yeah. a sponge of what Charlie said. He was like his son, really. I Rodney Rash well. yeah. was like Charlie Whittenham's son that he didn't that, that he wasn't okay. his dad, but he, it, it, but Rodney Rash looked at him like a father, and Rodney was a great horseman. God rest his soul. I mean, he he had Navarone. I mean, he just he, we won five great ones in a row. You know. Wow. And then I took off him to ride Fraser, and I won with Fraser. <laughs> so that was okay. Crazy. So let me ask you something like that. Uh, so when right. you make when you take off. I didn't take off. I had a contract with Alan Paulson. What okay. Was I supposed oh, to do? okay. Okay. Fair. You know, and fair. just get, get, yeah. check it out. Okay, I was riding for Mr. Hibbert. I loved riding for Mr. Hibbert, and and I mm -hmm. love winning races for him. You know, yeah, he yeah. had some great horses. He had a horse named Ken Grand that Joe Manzi. I, I rode for Joe Manzi. Won his first race. I he was a big, good-looking horse and won at one hundred nine. I think he won one hundred eight and four, maybe. Like his you're first race. I mean, on, a two-year-old, two-year-old. No, a two-year-old. His name was dirt, Ken dirt, Grand, okay. and I, he was, I thought he was the next coming of a, a really nice horse. Yeah. He actually he actually hurt himself and had to retire after that. Yeah. But These are the, fast ones the other great I horse, had. Navarone, I say, I rode for him, mm -hmm. and Navarone was such a nice horse. He'd come down that stretch and just kick it, right? Yeah. And um, and I was really kind of, I was like, I wasn't upset, but because I had the contract with, with Mr. and Mrs. Paulson, and I, and I honored the calls, every call that they gave me, but when Navarone was going to go into turf with Fraze and, and Sky Classic and them, yeah. I go, man, so Navarone's going to have a hell of a shot to, to win it. And Chris got the, Chris McGarren got the mount. Yeah. Well, I rode Fraze and, uh, and the Breeders' Cup with Fraze, I remember going down the backside. I kind of pushed the hedge over a little bit to get through it and then came out around another horse. Because yeah. Gulfstream does not have a rail, you know. On the inside rail, did you know that? Um, Golf Stream does not have a rail from the seven eighths pole to the quarter pole. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. they're not. They have a hedge. That's oh, it. okay. They never rail. Interesting. Yeah. So um, so. So I did was, you? Did you when you rode speed horses on the grass? No, he, was, he came from. No, I, no, I know, I know. You know? I, you, no, you could come out the pace, no problem. Yeah. But and again, I mean, I have to really stretch my memory to think of a lot of the rides back when I was then, like when I was that age, to to really remind myself. Do you of remember how a building named Mel Air? She ran with Snow Chief and Southern Hale. I, I do remember the name, but I, Snow Chief's a little pre my time. Snow though. Chief, uh, Alex Solis won the Preakness with. Okay. And they were coming back to Hollywood Park, and Marge Everett made the silver screen a six hundred thousand dollar purse from four hundred, put four hundred thousand more into it if a horse that won one of the Triple Crown races would race in it. Okay. So Mouse Duty put Snow Chief in it. Okay. So now Snow Chief's in it. I just won on Southern Halo I for Wayne horse. Lucas, right? Yeah. Was Southern Halo or yeah, Southern Halo? I think it was 
What was his name? I can't remember exactly. Something I know, like that. I know their so horse. Anyways, I don't know um, if it was in the same um, division. So, uh, so uh, Wayne says, hey, tell John Sadler to run uh, Malaria in the Oaks, and we'll win the the silver screen. And I told Wayne, I go, Wayne, I can't tell John where to put his horses, right? Yeah. And so um, I ended up riding Malaria. For John Sadler, she was a little great. Well, I know there's like the and, race named after Miller. The yeah, and, yeah. So anyway, she ran a mile at Hollywood Park in one thirty-two and three. Ooh. I mean, win it by ten lengths, and and Snow Chief and Southern Halo are behind her, right? Wow. And and this is a little three-year-old filly. It's her third start, and John did a hell of a job with her. And M- Millard and Rose owned the filly. two little old ladies owned the filly, and oh. they owned Rosie's KT and 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 Miller and uh, boy, well, what a uh, she was a freak. She really was something else. So Wayne, after the race, says, see, I told you, because he ran second with, with his horse. And I, I didn't want to take off him, but I had to, because that was a really nice filly. She was something else. So when you make when you take off horses like that, is yeah. it pretty much you making the decision, or is the jockey agents and you talk together? But is it pretty much your call based on the way you you saw the horse move and breathe and, and everything? Or is that well, is that a joint effort? Well, you know, being taken off of horses or taking off of horses comes from every angle. It could be me taking off the horse because I have a better horse to ride, or maybe I have a prior commitment. But how much of the time is it the commitment? Is it really like a thing? Hold like, on, let me finish, okay? Yeah. It could be the other way around. They could take me off the horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, say, for instance, I won the, the Santa Anita Derby with Codex mm-hmm. at 25 to 1. Yeah. And um, I was suspended for five days, and at that time, you couldn't get a, an appeal. Okay. So Eddie Delahousie rode codex in the hollywood derby okay. and he won okay so i'm like okay well i get to get him back because uh, i'm gonna win a preakness with him because wayne forgot to nominate him for the kentucky derby but he had him <laughs> oh. in the preakness right and okay. that year genuine risk won the derby okay. so um i go to workouts on monday and i'm on a horse for wayne and wayne's got him with lead rope and we're jogging him back to the seven eights ball and wayne says i've got some good news and some bad news i go is codex okay he goes, yeah, but you're not riding him. That's yeah. the bad news. <laughs> I, started, I had a 16-year-old kid. I'm a 16-year-old kid. Yeah. I was 17, whatever I was. And I had teardrops coming down my cheeks. And I, yeah. I was like, man, how can that happen, you know? And mm. then uh, he says, uh, Mr. Nehru is really good friends with Angel Cadero. And he, he wanted to ride Angel on the horse, so I had to. And Wayne probably thought I was a little inexperienced to ride him at the time, 16, too. 16, 17? Come on. I mean, but no, I wasn't, you how, know. So Wayne, how, I would have won that race without an inquiry. <laughs> so how many... So when you remember, you, got, you took genuine risk to the middle of the track. Okay. Angel, Angel Cordero did. Because um, Angel Cordero can ride five horses in one race, you know. He can ride my horse, your I, horse, and two other guys' horses, and his own horse. I, I That's how good Angel of, is. I know you got a lot of respect for that man. Oh, that That's, man's a genius. You know, he's, he's, he's great. I mean... I again, I kind of. Yeah, he's kind of like Lafitte. Lafitte was oh, oh man, class act too. Just just yeah, true gentleman he's, too. He's my idol, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good man. No, great, great. I, yeah. So when I was a kid, I would go to the track and I would every once in a while I'd talk to a jockey. But mm. you were probably way too intimidating to me, just because I mean, I don't know. You're, well, it's because I'm so good looking, bro. I know. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. I like, go. What, what am I supposed to do? I'm but yeah, no, I just I had a. I, there's a. I used to. I tried to talk to Frankel a couple times, mm. but he, you know. We want his, kid, we want. Yeah, he's always kind of blowing me off, yeah. but he, but you know, it, it was funny. I think, I think we, I, I saw like what he did, and I, I mean, he and Julio Canani were like just crushing the turf, right? Mm-hmm. For, and Sahadi mm-hmm. and all them. So, so I would always kind of just, I remember just being intimidated, but the fact that they would be. St- 10 feet away from me mm-hmm. and you know it's so easy to talk to people that's mm-hmm. that's one of the things Charlie I was a very easy man to talk to I never got he, to talk to Charlie he really? was because he was like right when he was getting older I didn't as when I was coming to the game like mm-hmm. the late 90s like yeah in, yeah, in the late 90s, yeah. Or but what a, what a, he was a gift to horse racing well he used to take the horses to the beach I heard too and train well, he did the that, but but let me tell you something about Charlie okay Charlie would always one more bump around the training track before he worked him and then as soon as that break was over his horse should be ready to go work because he already warmed up, you know, and uh, yeah. and and he jog him a lot. And you know, let me tell you something about Charlie. Okay, Charlie was the man that was able to get a horse that was off for two years and get him ready to win at a mile and a quarter the first start back. He did that with a horse named Nasser wow. Al Arab. 
I wrote for Was Sheikh, it on dirt or was Sheikh it Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum. It was a turf horse that he ran on the dirt in the mud wow. and we won the race. Yeah, we won wow. the Struven and uh, I think we won the San, uh, San Luis Stakes too. So how did you... Juan, not San Juan Cup. Did we wow. win the San Juan Cup of Toronto that year? We might have won it, the San Juan Cup of Toronto with him too. Mm -hmm. I won it four times, so I don't know. But um, Charlie was just something else. I mean, I mean Bobby, I mean, all these trainers. There's so many great trainers at Santa Anita and so many good horsemen, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of them just retired, Bill Spar. I mean, Bill Spar was... Yeah. He was, a, he was a legend. I mean, Bordenero, I mean, he had some great horses, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a zombie, you know. Yep. I mean, and you got guys like Doug O'Neill, just, I mean. Didn't you read Lava Man at some point? I won the first Gold Cup Lava Man one. I yeah. won him. And then I couldn't go to Japan because of the laws of Japan racing. Oh. And that's when Corey inherited him out, and he stuck with it. And okay. uh, got, he says, if I go right, I get right when he comes back. And he made how, how could Lava Man win on, I think, dirt, synthetic, and turf? Like, at, at, I think most, of, at, I think maybe even all three at a mile and a quarter. Well, I don't think there's, that horses, was, there's not very many horses like Lava Man. No, I'm not saying that, okay? First so of all. when you rode that horse, though, did you, could you tell that... He was as good as he well, was. Well, could you tell that he could run on all the surfaces? Like, Well, I like, never rode him on the turf. It, you never rode him on the turf. And I never rode him on synthetic. I wanted the, the he Hollywood lost Gold the Pacific Cup. Classic on the, on the well that was me then I ran, right? third, I ran third yeah uh, my good, buddy yeah. so my, one of my friends from high school he actually would have hit the pick six if, if, if uh, yeah, I, won. Lava, I think there was a big long shot actually yeah. I think yeah. Jerry, Jerry Brown yeah. had, had like that, had this, uh, an interest or something in the source that, that shocked the world at 30 or so to one that day yeah you know I thought I was going to win it too and yeah no I thought you were, were going to win too yeah you opened up coming in the stretch and just I don't know. I don't know what happened. So, so was Lava Man like? How would he rank on all the great horses? I mean, he was a, he was a claimer that was claimed by O'Neill and then turned into yeah, a, a uh, monster. Uh, but uh, like... Lori Anderson, had, uh, Lori, um, Lori, um, what was his name? Lori was it? Lori Anderson. He was a gentleman that, that had the horse, and uh, Doug claimed him off him, and Doug turned him into a really good horse. And when, I when, mean, when I trainers... props to Doug. I mean, Doug, Doug just like. Doug's a very good horseman. Oh, like, we you know, did and, with all have another. And, and let me tell you something. So many horses. Not only is he a good horseman. But he's a good person. Yeah, you know, and, uh, you could walk up to Doug, talk to him, and he's like one of the guys that could, yeah. could come over to your house and have a barbecue. You know? Oh yeah, no. Uh, Doug, Doug, he's, I, I remember I won on Quick Enough. Remember Quick Enough? Oh, quick no, Enough coming down the hill. He claimed that one too. Did he? I, I'm almost sure he did. And we beat I'm a Zombie. I'm going. I'm on the lead, and here comes Mike with I'm a Zombie, and I'm, I'm just hand riding, and I beat I'm a Zombie, right? So, uh, so um, Mike Wallman's interviewing. Uh, Doug and says, well, what do you think? He goes, P-Val down the hill at 22 and change, forget about it. Because I yeah. was going to open up and down that hill, you go 21 to 1. You know, yeah, I went 22 yeah, yeah. and I just kept going. Well, uh, after he interviewed Doug, he he come to me and that, that you remember that, that song, Teach Him How to Dougie? Yeah. That was out. Oh, it was I, out at that time. Okay? No, I know so, that song very so they, well. They, they, they go, what did Doug tell you in, in the paddock? I said, Doug told me to teach him how to Dougie. <laughs> I got a kick out of that, but yep, that was Dougie. pretty cool. I mean, I partied, I with, I partied with him actually. You uh, party with, too? With, with, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, a lot of people actually went on the oh, show wow. I was on. They, 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 I get hit up all the time. What about plant medicine and psychedelics and all that stuff? Yeah. So, no, I go to Burning Man every year, and I'm involved in a big camp, and yeah. I'm all about spirituality. So, I, I'm, I'm more of a selective partier. So, I like to. I'm just really big into health and wellness. So, yeah, of course, so like of we, we, you all have to let your hair down, you know, if you had some. But yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a thing where you know you, you well, sometimes we all are human. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. And we're, we're spirits, you know? and, and we're, we're all going to make mistakes, you know, and. If there's anybody in there in, that um, in this that's watching this that hasn't made yeah. a mistake, that can cast the first stone, it must Jesus must be watching this because that's the only one I know that made uh, no mistakes. I mean, every single we're here for a reason. Yeah, obviously it would be way easier than this if it wasn't. We all get tested. I mean, I get tested all the all kinds yeah. of ways. You get tested. I mean, my God, it's. Yeah, I've done about 600 urinals, urine tests. 600? <laughs> only only 600? No, about 2,000, really. But, uh, <laughs> so what but, about uh, what about when you go to when you go to Europe? Do they do they drug oh, yeah, test they you? Yeah, they test you everywhere. everywhere. Really? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, I think it's a law here for every racing jurisdiction to test people. Interesting. Yeah. Well, well at least I mean, me, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a little unfair, but I mean no, it's, 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 no, it's not unfair. No, it's not unfair. It keeps. It keeps them. Um, but they, they need to have rules. It, they need they need to it, it, they need to honor. Honestly, they, they need, should they test need, everybody. You know, I think they, they don't test, test everybody now. Test the stewards too. 
Yeah, but don't they test everybody now? They taste the stewards, they taste the paddock judge, taste the, the girl that sells popcorn. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, hey, uh, well, that's so a good let's, excuse. Um, let's cut this little short today, huh? Yeah, so, so let me let me think if there's anything else uh, that's well, on my mind. Let me, maybe, um, uh, I'll, 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 I'll mean, probably tell you something, yeah, uh, that was one great. of my secrets. Well, um, tell me just anything that you think that won't reveal too much. But I mean, as a as, a, a, as a guy that's, a, that's betting this on is, speed horses, this, this would change the whole world of racing. This would this would okay. be like bring it. Uh, but I don't want to bring it here because well, bring bring a no no it no, no. We'll, we'll put on the next episode so you guys can come back and watch. How's okay. that? We can do that. That's all right, cool. bro. That's Peace cool. out. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, good times talking with P Val here. We're gonna go get some food and and uh, and hit the Mike Delaney. We love you. <laughs> We're going to hit, hit the, the convo on the, on the down low. So anyway, thanks a lot for listening. Um, if you want to follow P-Val, I'll, put, I'll give you his email or something if you want to. No, no, no. Don't email me. Don't. Don't. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe I will. Maybe Call I will. Call me. Give my phone number. Yeah, we'll it's give so your phone good. number. No. But anyway, it's been fun, man. Seriously, a lot of All respect. All right. God bless you. And bless. God bless Bill, Bill Mott. Love you, Bill. Yeah. Bless everybody.